Okay, we're back live again. We are back live? Yes, I don't know at what point it's actually going to, um, you know, drop and restart. I don't know exactly at what point um, your signal died, but I know I was flipping between tabs and I came back to the tab that our uh, control panel was on and the whole the whole page had crashed. Just See, one of these. And uh, that's intended that if we don't know that we crash, we go on and there is no transmission. See? Well, and it it always the the this time and the other time that it happened, both times, I had uh, multiple tabs open in my uh, in my browser, and I was flipping back and forth between the Facebook page and the uh, control panel, the the broadcast control panel. Yeah, and I guess you need to do that happened. that way. You know what's going on, but I like to point out something. Okay, this is, seems to happen every time. We talk about something major in the misconduct of the medical. And yeah, I talk about Dr. Oz and everything and all that. But the Susan Summer is too much of a popular thing. I think that might have something to do with it. Okay? Because it's a evidence that they are wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. And they're pushing their poisonous... Uh, I don't know. That's just not the right time. But anyway... What I was talking about was, and I don't know what Tom point you lost the connection, but I was talking about the problem with the dense breast that the mammogram is ineffective. It is ineffective in a lot of other things, but apparently, more so than other, is for dense breast. So much that. Um, a lot of people complained that they were never informed they had uh, dense breasts. They had totally to depend from what the doctor was saying and doing. So, <coughs> when 21 states passed a law that said they have, they have to inform the patient that they have dense breast. So, the situation is difficult, the mammogram is more complicated, and the mammogram should be dropped all along, okay? But with that, the IMA is fighting back on that le legislation. They don't like the law to step in and tell them what to do, uh, what they have to do. Why wouldn't they want to uh, inform the patient on their condition? No, they don't like the law to step in and tell them they have to. And uh, they're saying uh, that is totally unnecessary because it's our judgment what needs to be done and blah, blah, blah. So leaving the patient totally out of the loop. You cannot do that because it's their lives. But that's why uh, that's why they don't like it because once you have this information and the patient has that information, they are very likely to ask for an ultrasound. And doctors do not like to use ultrasound. Their excuse is that is not as effective. Okay, if the mammogram keeps giving you false results, then the mammogram should not be liked. No, they, we don't like the ultrasound. Why? Because the ultrasound used to be, and mind you, I am saying used to be because of something else I'll discuss uh, along this line and will come up and uh, some new equipment and some new nonsense. But anyway, used to be, and it still is if you do it traditionally, with the traditional equipment. It used to be a lot less expensive. And also, let me say something, not giving any doubt on what you're seeing. Now here, this doctor that is attacking the laws uh, about having to inform the patient about having that expressed, he's claiming that, oh, the ultrasounds are subject to mistakes. Say what? More mistakes. Ultrasound are subject to mistakes, so we cannot rely on them. We have to have better, and uh, ultra, uh, the mammogram is the best way to go. Okay? I hope I'm not and, catching that cough. And uh, this... Um, the concern about the dense breast have been raised, of course, by... 
the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, and is the one that is always fighting with the with the medical establishment. You know, uh, they were fighting about the age in which you start the mammograms. The medical establishment said age 40. The task force said not before 50. So they've always been a war. And um, this doctor who deserves an award, uh, let me try to find the name. Uh, actually, there are three, three Harvard Medical School radiologists, and they publish an article about uh, uh, unnecessary procedures and uh, false positive. And of course, they're not talking about unnecessary procedure being the mammogram. No, 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 no. It's the ultrasound that is unnecessary. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this doctor, the leading author of this article, by the name of Priscilla, I always thought that somebody that goes by the name of Priscilla shouldn't be trusted, but that's just my view. Uh, Priscilla. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, the name is Slanex, Slanex, or something similar. It's spelled S A, no, S L A. N E T Z. Slanets. Slanets. <coughs> and she is the, the director of the Breast Image in Research and Education at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And an associate professor at Harlem Medical School. Okay? She is saying that it's not true that mammogram uh, screening causes uh, a false positive like the task force says uh, and mammograms are the only screening tool that have been shown to reduce breast cancer and mortality. So. Oh boy. A word, a word for her. Oh, shut up your face. What's the matter you? Hey! Got the no respect. Hey! What do you think you do? Hey! Why you look so sad? Hey! It's a not so bad. Hey! It's a nicer place. Hey! Oh, shut up your face. Absolutely, shut up your face because uh, it's still gone and saying that that is not cost effective. Well, what is not cost effective is the mammogram, the ultrasounds are, and the ultrasound give you the right results. Okay, but no. No, 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 no. no. It's not cost effective okay. to take away our insane profits. Right. <laughs> and. Um, that's why she got the award. It's also saying that uh, that the mammogram are uh, they have they have a high, relatively high risk of false positive. Really, who said that? Beside her, that's an absolute lie. Okay, and besides she says there are other important factors that need to be considered in determining whether supplemental screening are needed basically the doctors are the one to decide and not the law and they have to decide uh, which women are at risk and which are, have to be recommended to supplemental screen, uh, screening and, and what type of supplemental screening Which, you know, that proves two things. First of all, the medical establishment doesn't like interference in what they're doing with the patient, even though 
it's a valid interference and it, it is derived by the lack of doing what's need to be done. And also the line about the ultrasound. Of course, they uh, claim to be the expert. They know better than anybody else. And so, well, the ultrasound, okay, not only is very, effect very cost effective, it's also tell you whether you have cancer or not. And you do not have to go for a biopsy after. You have an ultrasound, and after that, you had the color Doppler for it, which shows the blood flow. That can tell you whether it's cancer or not. End of the story. You don't have to go in and uh, create a route to spreading of the cancer by doing a biopsy. You don't have to do anything. The uh, mammogram is an absolute lie. It's expensive, it's x-ray, none of the things you want. The, the ultrasound, it's a simple, non-invasive, non-damaging, doesn't spread the cancer, and it tells you everything. And it's really cost-effective and quick. Well, no, uh-uh, that is not what we need. And then there is, because of all this talk, uh, it's the Mayo Clinic, yeah. From the Mayo Clinic, there is an exam that quadruple detection on invasive breast cancer. Oh, gee, that sounds to me like we're talking about uh, <laughs> false positive. Yeah. Yeah. Quadruple. Ugh. Okay. But this we'll method stuff is that called... nobody's ever seen before. Right. Well, if they can confuse... Uh, if they can confuse uh, cirrhosis of the liver with cancer, it is totally different. And an ultrasound comes out so totally different that there is not even a question about it. If they can confuse that, <laughs> or a sack of a, of a parasite, they can confuse it with cancer. It looks so much different. They can still confuse it with cancer. They can still want to remove the kidney of the poor person. I mean, come on. Oh, incompetence. Or black mold confused for metastasis of cancer or breast cancer. Please, stop killing people. Well, anyway, this breast, uh, molecular breast cancer imaging is... It's increasing the detection of invasive breast cancer. Um, it's apparently um, not a significant improvement for non-invasive cancer, like in situ, but it's, it's, really, uh, it's really effective for invasive one. And tumor in dense breast uh, can both appear white on a mammogram making the two, that's what the, the, the Mayo Clinic is asserting, and making a tumor uh, indistinguishable from the background tissue. Well, that's why you go with an ultrasound. Anyway, so but this method of molecular, huh? But that's not the way we do things. Right, we don't do that. We don't use... Uh, we don't use ultrasound. We don't use color doctor. We don't do that. So what? You should start doing it. Well, it's the law. Why is it the law? Because it's the law. Oh, the medical, not the law law. They don't want the actual law to interfere with what they're doing. So they don't want to inform people that they have, women that they have dense breasts. Why not? Because we don't want to. We want to have total control over the person. And you don't think the person can detect herself that she has dense breast? I think if they're smart, they can. Anyway, funny breast is sag more. There you have it. <laughs> okay. I'm keeping my mouth shut. Yeah. Molecular breast imaging is the detec detection rate of invasive breast cancer is more than 360 percent 
when used in addition to regular mammogram. Of course, you have to use mammogram because we said so. And what uh, molecular breast imaging does, it uses a small semiconductor-based gamma cameras to image the breast following the injection of a radio tracer. And they're saying, well, the cancer absorb the radio tracer avidly. The cancer absorb anything avidly. They retain the longer than healthy tissue. That's the issue. That's the point. So, unlike conventional breast imaging technique, such as mammogram and ultrasound, the MBI, molecular breast imaging, exploit the difference behavior of tumor relative to background tissue, creating an image that can detect tumor that are not seen by mammogram. And they have so many more positive. Yeah, and they're not false positive? Hmm. I wonder about that. Okay. And of course, it's a gamma camera and radioactive tracing. Gee, and we tried, in addition to X-ray, you're adding gamma rays. And we trying to stay away from radioactivity. No, of course not. Okay. But, there is a risk, using this method, there is a risk of incurring unnecessary biopsy because the false positive exam is increased in this study. Okay? So, it's not resolved the false positive. It's actually making it worse. But it increases the detection rate of invasive cancer in dense tumor, in dense breast. Ah. Well, uh, this other guy of the Mayo Clinic, Michael O'Connor, is not an MD, he's a PhD, he says that, oh, he's the one that developed the, the uh, Michael O'Connor is the one that developed the molecular breast cancer imaging. And uh, he calls this latest study a milestone, actually a major milestone mm. for both. Yeah, he developed it and it's a major milestone for both safety and the efficacy of the imaging device, largely because uh, the eye detection rate is achieved through low radiation exposure, low radiation exposure. Well, you don't want to do that. You don't want to expose. And he's very excited about his discovery and the advantages to women with, uh, with dense breasts. Okay. And, 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 and. This is for all women of age 40 and over. In addition, to using mammogram and MRI for women at high risk. So they're doing it all. Mammogram, MRI, and then molecular breast imaging. They're doing it, all of it. And this work was supported by what? By money from the Common Foundation. and an award from the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences. Okay, whatever, from the National Institute of Health. Okay, they discovered all of that, but then there is somebody else coming back about the ultrasound and women with dense breasts and all of that to improve 
the breast cancer detection in women with the dense breast. There is a new supplemental screening. And since the using ultrasound is a very disputed issue, I just presented that to you. Because a lot of doctors say that the sound waves, using sound waves, is not, not the best way to check for breast cancer. And my question is, how much do they know about breast can uh, ultrasound and breast cancer anyway? They say it's not the best way. Yeah, based on what? What deep knowledge they have of, breast can uh, of ultrasound in breast cancer? Nah. But they are pushing something new and very expensive, of course. A new piece of equipment new and very expensive a lot more expensive than a normal ultrasound this one's between a quarter to 300 of a mill up to 300,000 from general electric for the equipment and, or for the test well yeah and to me that this piece of equipment only proof is a proof of, of how the medical establishment opposes innovation and it's also they are lazy and don't want to study new ways and they don't want to do anything that is only slightly complicated to use because the mammogram is not it's done by, by the machine the MRI is done by the machine they don't want to do have something to do manually like the ultrasound I showed you that uh, that newspaper clipping didn't I back uh, oh, it's been years but I think I even put it on your Facebook page um, an old uh, clipping from 1940s Germany and it's in German yeah. black and white uh, picture. Yeah. it's a Excellent. mammogram machine it's exactly this it was exactly the same in Hitler's day as it is today well actually they weren't Maybe. really squashing the breast in Hitler's days well this was it was it was being it was a woman with her breast in the in between the plates and it was being squashed oh really mm -hmm. look a lot like x-ray machine only just uh, yeah uh, but it was yeah. just as as a uh, as an illustration of how so little has changed. That's all. I mean. It is. It is, and they are adding some things. But uh, and see, the doctors they went to school to learn something. They're comfortable with it because they learn. And they are stupid, and they are. You see this. You do this. You do this. You do this. You do this. They yeah. learn that, and that's it. They don't want to know anything else, which is extremely dangerous. And the same money powers have been funding it ever since. Yeah. IG Farben, Hext, Bayer. I mean, the big, the original pharma conglomerates. They came yeah. out of Nazi Germany. And they stopped there. See, no progress. Master gas and no prob progress. Uh, but the other thing that scares me is that these people don't know much of anything about ultrasound. And they claim it's so difficult. Oh, yeah, it is so difficult to use an ultrasound. Please! Oh, it, tra it requires so much work in training. Uh, to use an ultrasound piece of equipment, please. But now, GE has, and the uh, chief... Uh, Jesse Jacob, the chief medical officer at General Electric Health Care. It's a radiologist. I make, she, she makes the ultimate stupid statement by saying it does not make any sense to use an ultrasound on women who do not have dense breasts. If they have dense breasts, then you want to use the ultrasound. But if they don't have uh, dense breasts, then it doesn't make any sense. Really? Why? Because that way you spend less money, and it doesn't make any sense to spend less money? No, oh, you don't have a dense uterus, so this uh, this ultrasound isn't going to help at all with uh, imaging your baby. <laughs> okay. If you had a more dense uterus, we could actually get an image, you know, that... Uh 
But this way we can. Dense right, tissue, right. yeah, dense tissue and ultrasound, they just don't go together. I mean, I mean, no, less no, dense no. tissue and ultrasound. Yeah, and ultrasound don't go together. It's only dense tissue and ultrasound. Right. Yeah, I well, mean, completely well. ridiculous. You want to give her another an award to her too? To shut up her face? Yeah, this was worse, so you gave her the uh, hot uh, cup of coffee. That was just kind of on and the fly. Uh, <laughs> that was just kind of on the fly. So. But also because, that's good, because she has no idea. When, this is representing the General Electric Healthcare Division, and uh, she has no idea what an ultrasound does, and they're selling the ultrasound machine. But this ultrasound machine is different. She is talking about uh, false positive uh, coming back from the, basically she's talking about what the tumor looks in the mammogram, not an ultrasound. In an ultrasound, the tumor is dark gray. Black is a cyst, dark gray is a tumor, white is the regular tissue. So she's talking about why it's that's in the mammogram, idiot. And she represents the GE that is elect selling the ultrasound machine, of course, for the dense breast. We bring good things to life. Is that what GE says? Yeah, we bring good things to life. Oh, bringing to life the tumor is a good thing? <laughs> But that's, anyway, that's, that's pretty old. They probably have a different slogan now. That, that's yeah. from the, that's from the eighties, I think. Uh, but what I said before is, the ultrasound is all it's needed. Why the ultrasound is the only thing is needed is because the ultrasound will tell you there is a tumor, and this growth is it malignant or not. Well, if it has an unusual amount of vasculature inside, it's malignant. Forget the biopsy gun. Forget the... Uh, with the needle the size of a, of a straw. Forget the actual surgical biopsy. Forget the whole thing. Just do the uh, uh, color doppler and you'll know if it is cancer or not, without invading the body, without getting the chance of spreading the cancer, without doing anything other than viewing what's there and knowing what you're looking at. Speaking of the needle the size of a straw, did I tell you about, I probably have, remember a couple of weeks ago when you made cannoli and, uh, mm -hmm. and I was looking, looking at pictures online of cannoli and then I got to thinking, uh, some, somehow I had, um, I had also run across uh, something having to do with uh, with an IV needle, and you know, an IV needle is also called a cannula, C-A-N-N-U-L-A. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I looked at them side by side, and I said, you know, there's got to be a connection because the cannoli shape, the shape of the cannoli, it's it's like a blown up, you know, version of the cannula because it's it's a cylinder with a that comes to a, a diagonal point. And I don't know, this, that just crossed my mind instantly. Cannoli, cannula. Yes, oh, but be cannoli is a lot more interesting, though. Well, sure, yeah. I'd much rather <laughs> study a cannoli than a, than a cannula. Yeah. Uh, you know, but anyway, so GES introduced the ultimate ultrasound, so they can do it instead, the do instead of the doctor. So they claim they are not missing spots and they are giving all these different images and then the radiologist has to interpret it, but at least they are taking properly. Why? A doctor is too stupid to take the right, the right images? Come on. It's not difficult at all. Okay. The other thing is, Okay, so this is probably, in their opinion, a better way to detect, detect the cancer there. Okay, but then, whoa, panic. The person has cancer. Uh, is it true that they have it or not? That's a totally different story. But assuming that is true, 
they said, well, don't panic because they have done research and what they have concluded is this is totally unbiased I want to mention to you in quote totally unbiased these articles indicate that costlier what kind of English is that but the article that's a title I disagree with the way they phrase it but they said costlier breast cancer treatment are linked to better survival of course it, yeah who everything that costs more money is better <laughs> yes but for whom right okay more expensive bc treatment are linked to a greater chance of survival and that's indicated by a new research and the comment is coming from a Dr. Carey, Carey Gross, well, it sure is Gross, hmm. director of Yale University Counter Cancer, I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. Uh, Dr. Carey Gross, director of Yale University Cancer uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, Public Policy and Effectiveness Research Center. Gee, could I have it a little longer, the name of this research center? Exactly. Oh, boy. Public Policy and Effectiveness Research Center. And the article was published in the April issue of Health Affairs. Okay, so what is the medical conspiracy gonna say to this Dr. Kerry Gross? Do you get a guess? He gets another award today. Okay, which one? Oh, shut up your face! What's the matter, you? Well, actually, he's the one that thinking is a, is a, a nice place to have to spend all that money. I think his message is to people. Our conclusion is that his message is trying to brainwash the public to say, "Stop complaining about the price of drugs. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Yeah, because and stop complaining about the side effects because you live longer." You're saving your life. Life saving therapy. Yeah, the Cassandra case. And of course, that comes from the statement that the medical is using to the point of making everybody sick. The phrase is, How much your life's worth? My life! People, life is worth a lot. But life, not suspended animation that you get with the cancer treatment. That is no life, that's suspended animation. Ah. See, I don't know how you react to that. that. That statement infuriates me beyond repair because everybody's life is important, at least to some people. Might be a limited group of people, but to some people, everybody's life is important. Okay, so, but and the, the importance of, of that life, yeah. I right. mean, there's a lot to be said for quality of life, too. Well, it's the not life just is important. having a beating and heart. It's a lot more to it than just having a beating heart. Well, that's what I said. That's yeah. suspended animation. Right. That is not life. The way they live with all those drugs is not life. And the life of a person should not connect it to a price. 
those things don't go together. Money and life, they don't go together. A personal life is there and is a, a priceless value to certain people. And if somebody cannot get out of bed, is throwing up all over the place, cannot eat, maybe drink some Coke, maybe, because Coke uh, settles your stomach, uh, in spite of all the bad propaganda against Coke. They handed it to you and people are on chemo, attached to the catheter to the chemo, they give him Coke to control the stomach and uh, stop it from throwing up so much. So. Well, you can't have that. Here's some caffeine-free Coke Zero. No, <laughs> it has to be the real Coke. Coke. <coughs> but is that life? Oh, you have a TV to watch, so that's life. You well, can't move. I mean, any aspect, not just the medical, even any aspect of living in a controlled society, you know, yeah. it's not really life. It's just, you know, you're, you're basically being kept alive by something else that you're here to serve. Is vegetating, but um, with the um, uh, with the uh, chemo is not even vegetating. Platinum-based therapies, nerve agents. Yeah, I think it'd be very p therapeutic to give me a few pounds of platinum. It'd be very therapeutic to my bank account. Yeah, somebody bank account. So, but don't complain, because if you spend more money, you live longer. How? Well, but you live longer. You vegetate longer. And then there is another article that justifies the price of cancer drugs. Ah. Uh, the price of cancer drugs. Let me try to find that stupid article. Uh, there we go again. I can never find anything when I need it. Okay, here it is. Okay. Uh, the high, ridiculous cost of cancer drugs is justified. There is a reason for it. Never mind that it's the most expensive in the U.S. Well, that's the most expensive in the U.S. for a reason. See. What happened uh, somebody a couple of doctors working at MD Anderson Cancer Center and of course that is totally unbiased what they say, okay, because it's MD Anderson. MD Anderson works twenty four seven on chemo. Twenty four seven. They have seven buildings, at least last time I was told by other patients, which is a few years ago. They probably have more now. Uh, but three years ago or so, they had seven buildings operating 24-7. Is that why they call it the seven layer, the seven levels of hell? No, that's within the building. <laughs> yeah, you go down on the top, there are the doctors, offices, all with luxury, and then you go down, down, down when the pre patient are treated. Um, and the walls are yellow or puke, it's just oh, the smell and the screaming, those are the different level of hell. But anyway, at MD Anderson said, they pointed out that in... Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, from 2000, the cost of chemo therapy had gone Uh, by 5,000 in 2000, 5,000 to 10,000. No, 5,000 to 10,000 in 2000 to more than 100,000 in 2012. Wow. And how can they justify that? Because the benefits to patients. <laughs> They are the prices uh, 
control the development of new drugs. So the higher prices are helping the development of new drugs. And then um, if you stifle the price, you stifle the research. So you have to keep the prices high. Do mm. not negotiate for lower prices. And you, because can't, and you can't raise wages, no, because the economy will collapse. Oh, yeah. But you can increase the price of drugs. And CEO pay. Yeah. And uh, you cannot do that. You cannot include, uh, lower the prices. You cannot import the lower drug from other countries because they all affect the industry in the U.S. And the industry in the U.S. is what supports everything. And, of course, we just said before that uh, even for just breast cancer, if you spend more, you live longer. But if you want a new and new drugs develop, uh, you want innovation, you have to allow for the high prices. You know, so don't gripe. I read something just a few days ago. Talk, I mean, you know, and, and, and you read something with statistics in it. You never can really completely tell, you know, uh, but the statistics anyway in this article. Those said, are phony anyway. Well, it was kind of, it, it, it kind of raised an eyebrow anyway. The statistics in this article we're talking about. Uh, buying power you know basically so you're making so much per hour you're making so much per paycheck that's not really a complete indicator of your buying power because there's all kinds of things in the equation like the, the price the price of food the price of gas the price of living the price of your uh, uh, where you live everything prices have a big it's what you're being paid versus the relative prices for the things that you need that's yeah. your buying power. Well, in this article, it went, went on to say that um, to have the same buying power that a minimum wage employee had in 1960 when the minimum wage was $1 an hour, to have that same buying power in 2015, a person would have to earn $22 per hour. That's how behind the uh, curve our wage structure is today to, to buy what a person was able to buy on one dollar an hour in 1960 today would have to be making twenty two dollars an hour which is not even close and you got people you got people you know going uh, oh, the, whole, the whole system will collapse if you go up to fifteen dollars an hour because they say when that happens, then the CEOs will have to be making a million dollars an hour. Well, that's the whole point. You know, the gap between the CEO pay and the bottom guy on the ladder pay, that's what that has expanded should, over the years. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be. The CEO, yeah, they have responsibility, but please, okay? Not the ridiculous pay they get. And it's already after four, I'll go ahead and tell you, but you know we got cut off, and I don't know how long you want to go, but... Uh, we're really, I guess we're not on a timetable. You can make this one longer if you want to. No, uh, where we are on the second hour now, right? Yeah, we're about, we're about 43 minutes into the second segment. The first segment was supposed to go and hold two hours, but of course we got cut off at about an hour and 15 minutes. That's where I noticed that we had crashed. Uh, so. Oh boy, my watch is not working. If you, if you add the two up together, we're just a couple of minutes shy of a full two hours right now, putting them two together. Oh, okay. But my uh, watch has stopped too. So, but anyway, one thing that I really needed to discuss. So there are other subjects, but I needed to discuss this. Is remember? I'm sure you do because it's recent. The Angelina Jolie that she originally had a preventive that preventive double mastectomy and then she had the preventative brain removal well uh, you have to have a brain to have it removed and I'm not sure her brain condition is because she has been so brainwashed so easily brainwashed that uh, um, her brain uh, to say the least doesn't work very well uh, and then she had uh, And then she had uh, the ovary and the fallopian tube removed. It's just most of the, intest the internal. Okay. Well, there are two things. 
another lady, which is somebody that wrote on the web, is certainly not uh, known like uh, Angelina Jolie. You see, the impact of somebody like her, it's enormous because there are some people that think that uh, individually in show business are somehow smarter than the rest of humanity because they were able to get in the limelight and uh, to be successful, make money, of course a lot of them lose it too. But I don't know why the public opinion is that they are smarter than other people. Okay, let me ask you something. How smart is a person that spends his or her life pretending to be somebody else? <laughs> And they're even good at it and convincing. How smart is a person like that? I don't think very smart. Maybe but that's crazy like a fox, though. I don't know. Anyway, but so they think she's so smart and that what her decision was and it was good and well and people should follow. Look how smart Reagan was. I mean. Yeah, so smart that for, uh, unless he had memorized his part, he didn't know what to say. And they were saying ridiculous things. Remember that time that he basically was saying uh, we should pay the ransom of people that had been kidnapped in, and taken prisoner in Iran? Uh, in, uh, no, the Iran was liberated. What's some other incident? I don't remember. But then, anyway, he indicated that. And they said, whoa, what he said. And then, no, 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 that's not what he said. Well, because he didn't uh, have a speech at the time, he had no idea what he was saying. Hey, the guy had Alzheimer. They were uh, treating him, tried to control it, but he had Alzheimer. Uh, and there is this new book that came out from the staff in the White House, and one claim is that he went to the in the kitchen and talked to the chef and gave a national secret to the chef. Okay. Uh, things that he had done, decision that he had made that they were secret. National secret to the chef. That's not Alzheimer. I don't know what he is. Who did he think Predictions he was? made by Gene Dixon. <laughs> no, I. It's a book. It talks. It's from the staff. It's not anybody in public service. But uh, another one was about. Uh, Hillary Clinton hitting Bill with a book on her head when the uh, the scandal came out of whatever her name was. What's her face? Monica. Uh, yeah. yeah. She hit him with a book and she hit him so hard, maybe it was hit the corner of the book, I don't know, and he was bleeding, had to have stitches. My comment to that is good for you, Hillary. Anyway. Yeah, I don't so, know what to believe because I always I heard all at the same time I heard that she wasn't really phased. She didn't really care because they didn't really have much of a marriage other than the arranged PR marriage. Yeah, well, mm. listen, the things that are said, and nobody knows what goes on in the private life of people. So even when they are in the public eye, so they've said so many things to attack her, to criticize her, to make a mess of her life. That Benghazi. Is, Benghazi. Benghazi. Yeah, Benghazi. And now is what? A cell phone? Yeah. Emails? Deleting emails. Yeah. To see the face of the guy that is accusing her of that. And just on his look, you know, this guy's guilty of everything. He should be arrested. Just tell, him how many, tell him how many, uh, how many died in Lebanon under Reagan's watch at the uh, embassy um, conflict, and they shut up. And people keep dying at the embassies. Even recently, they keep dying because the embassy... It's being targeted, violating the international law. What difference does it make? But it's the <laughs> international law that ambassadors do not bring pain. What they bring is not. Oh, God. I get mad and I hit the printer. <laughs> okay. So it's printing the blank page. Um. But anyway, so this other case, and it's connected to Angelina Jolie thing, and uh, this woman talks about, uh, it's just an, an ordinary person, her name is Samantha Shaw, it was on the web, but it, it, it's talking about basically doing something that Angelina Jolie did recently, but she did it 
long time ago before that advertising. And basically what it was is that when she went to a family reunion of some kind, his, uh, her father told her that her uncle uh, had breast cancer and they did, they did surgery and everything and they discovered that he had this BRCA mutation. I don't know if it was one or two. Uh, he had the mutation and he was uh, warning her and everybody else in the family to get tested. So different people got tested in the family and they came out negative, but she came out positive. I think I hear your printer. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> going on its own. Uh, I uh, tapped the pencil. I was mad. I tapped the pencil where I shouldn't have tapped it, but why is continuing that? I don't know. Um, so she got scared, and that's the thing. The medical scares you to death. We misinformation. But, oh, she had this... Uh, mutation that they have discovered it causes cancer, breast cancer, so uh, she should do some preventive surgery, and they scared her to death so much that she was agreeing to do it. And then actually, a strange thing is, she said, a doctor told her, why do you want to do that? And get mutilated. You know, you will never be able to get married if you get mutilated. And she thought that was terrible of a doctor to say that. The doctor told her the truth, okay? Mm. But um, so she, as a result, she looked around and she found this doctor, so she must have had money. She found this doctor in New York that was doing, uh, removing the breast, but uh, preserving the skin and the nipple so she could have a breast implant and be saved. You know, not looking uh, like she was butchered. Now. That's what happened. And my question, I like to prompt something and present something. Okay, so they removed the breast tissue because the person is prone to breast cancer. Well, don't you know that they can still get breast cancer in the muscle tissue? And then you remove that and they can get it on the bone. And then when you get it on the bone, they said... Thank you for flying on Italia airline. You know, that joke. People that know how to swim and move to the left. The people that don't know how to swim move to the right. And thank you for riding on Italia airline. That means they're going to die. And, uh, yeah, they send you home to make you comfortable because you're going to die when it gets to the bone. But, but, the problem is, you see, there's some chance to get breast cancer. Oh, she said, they told me it's so small, it's only 1%. Uh-uh, no, not that small. But you do an implant, an implant, breast implants cause infection and breast cancer. So you're removing the tissue for nothing because they still can get breast cancer. Actually, you increase the possibility of getting breast cancer by doing that surgery. But she said that, that a lot of other people, instead of uh, going like she did, she decided to do and have the breast surgery to be on the safe side. And now she has had uh, a kid, I think, too. But she is married and she has had a kid. But what she's saying is there are other people that have the same... Uh, the same mutation that decided not to have the surgery she had and to just monitor okay and the problem is that she reports something about the monitoring for breast cancer and I hope that's a misprint I sincerely hope so she said that people that opt for monitoring are going to have a mammogram and MRI monthly. Oh God, I, uh, once or twice a month. I hope that is a misprint and means once or twice a year. Because once or twice a month, you're gonna kill the person very wow. 
yeah, very quickly. Even once or twice a year, it's pretty bad, and they end up getting the breast cancer in the first place because of all that testing. But I hope it's not once or twice a month because that's the best recipe for actually getting breast cancer and getting killed. Ah, getting an aggressive case and getting killed. The other thing that she said was that after she had, and she was, she's in her 30s still, she was told that she should have, like Angelina Jolie, have her ovary removed because she's in danger of having ovarian cancer. And the fallopian tube. And what this woman said, ah, that's where I drew the line. No. So she didn't do like Angelina Jolie and she did not have that surgery. She just got mad and drew the line. And guess what? While all this was going on, there was an article on April 8th that only appeared once. And I was discussing the actual risk connected with BRCA, one and two. How much risk that mutation brings? Because the medical attitude is, you have that mutation, you ha are doomed. That's it. It's over for you. You're going to get breast cancer. You're going to get ovarian cancer. And you got to have your ovaries out before age 40, otherwise, doomed fail. That's what the medical is portraying, that's what they're telling. Well, these articles say, not all BRCA1 and BRCA2 bring a risk for breast or ovarian cancer. Not all of them do. It depends. Well, some mutation and we really don't know what they are. That's what the medicals. It depends. So basically you still have luck of the draw. You might or might not get it. It's not true that we you will certainly get it. You might or might not, and there are plenty of people who got old and never got it, had the mutation and never got breast cancer or ovarian cancer. With that ridiculous statistics, you're turning around and allowing them to butcher your body? I mean, that's my question. Are we getting here? What are you doing? I. I'm just flabbergasted. I don't know how people can accept. Oh, you have this mutation. That's it, you're doomed. You're going to have breast cancer. We are the only one who can save you. And you have to be agreed to be mutilated. Oh, no, it's not mutilation. It's life saving. And Angelina Jolie had also her ovary removed. Well, she's too young to go into menopause. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to give you, she's on a patch and it's a hormonal replacement therapy. Oh, wow. Have we forgotten the statistics of hormonal replacement therapy that causes breast cancer? So, as I said, she's becoming full circle. Prevention against breast cancer. Well, then we got to go further. Prevention against ovar ovarian cancer. And then... Um, hormonal replacement therapy. And hormonal replacement therapy does what? Cause cancer. What is breast cancer in the first place? But you had a mutation that causes breast cancer. Oops. Maybe my or my not. But it's a possibility that causes breast cancer. Well, hormonal replacement therapy has a very strong possibility to cause breast cancer. And so if she doesn't get it, that means she would have never gotten it in the first place. But they lied to her. And she believed it. She got scared and believed it. And then when she considered uh, asking alternative practitioner, oh my God, no, she cannot do that. That's very dangerous. 
to her and everybody else. You cannot discuss calm. You cannot get into calm. Oh, it's very dangerous. You're giving a bad example to people. You're going to be prosecuted. You're going to lose your job. Like uh, <laughs> Dr. House is risking to lose. Come on, guys. And then... There is, beside, there is an article that, instead of discussing, oh, oh, it's good to spend all that money for cancer therapies. There is another article that discusses, and I cannot find the darn thing, as usual, with all this paper, but discusses the cost of over-treatment per year. All women overtreated. Overtreatment in breast cancer. This is just for breast cancer. The article says that cost of over treatment a year for over treatment it runs four billion. No wonder they don't want to stop what they're doing. Four billion. And how do you break that up? 2.8 billion from false positive. 2.8 billion from false positive. Well, that's why we cannot possibly allow the ultrasound. Oh, the ultrasound is bad. It doesn't give you any information, valid information, unless you have dense cancer. But even that is open to false positive. Ah, ultrasound... I think not. Okay. And then the remaining 1.2 billion of over treatment costs are breast cancer over diagnosis. That means they have something that is rather insignificant. It's there, but it's really insignificant. It's not anything to be alarmed about. Well, 1.2 billion go into that plus the 2.8 billion, that false positive, that makes it 4 billion. I just cannot believe these figures, can you? All I can think of is just a, such a tiny fraction of that would take away the fear of going homelessness, or the fear of homelessness. <laughs> uh, a tiny fraction will take of that kind of money, minuscule fa fraction of that. We are talking about average of $10,000 per patient. Of course, you know, once the establishment takes over it, the prices would change. But even changing, they would be still a lot less than what is being, that what is being placed now, spent now. And not to mention the fact, sorry, I dropped the page. Uh, and not to mention the fact that people wouldn't lose work, wouldn't lose uh, the ability to de support themselves, or wouldn't lose uh, their lives and their life savings, their homes, like they do with standard treatment. That wouldn't yeah. happen. No, that's not permitted because they are going to lose uh, so much revenue so much money that cannot be feasible that cannot be acceptable we gotta put but you know you you can't plow your fields with horses that are starving um, right. you can't you can't make a living off a population that can't support themselves so that's where the real fear comes in I keep thinking that they're they, they've got to they must have gotten to the point where they just absolutely don't care uh, they're going to take every dime they can, no matter what, because uh, pretty soon, yeah, it's, pretty soon, it's not going to matter because they know something is around the corner that we're not aware of. I don't know, but something is going to happen, and it, uh, this situation has to come to an end. Reduce eighty percent of the world's population, maybe, maybe. No, that's not it. It's written in stone. No, it is, and now I find that article on the cost of our team, but I already discussed it because I remember. Uh, 
No, that's not it. I think something is going to happen. People. Uh, I might be just a dreamer, but I think people are going to wake. And uh, Italian anthem. The national anthem. Italy is awakened. That's what the national anthem was saying. <laughs> Our national yeah. anthem is go back to sleep. Everything's okay. I don't think so. Does it? No. The dawn early light? I don't think that's what he's saying. But uh, the uh, national anthem, the actual words, what people are doing is another story. Even in Italy, what people are doing is another story, but the anthem is saying the country is awakened. And he's getting back victory. And victory in Italian anthem says that victory was created by God as slave of the Roman Empire. So the modern Italy was taking back that. They didn't really, but they were trying. Hmm. Anyway, see the same thing. I think that it's slow. But I think they have a fear that something is going to happen and that something is going to change it. So they're trying to grab as much as they can while they can. And I hope that's the case. And you combine that with the divide and conquer, uh, which is as old as time, basically. But I, I don't know. I just I see it more today than I did. Maybe I'm just more aware of it today. I don't know. But I see it more. Yeah, now. I am more aware. But the thing is that now that Cause there's so many people so that would outnumber them. In, I mean, just uh, uh, overwhelming amounts outnumber them. But as long as they keep us divided over over bullshit, you know what I mean? Stuff that does not even matter. But is it going to happen? Continue? It's a class not. war going on out there. And you, I know, but you everybody even, knows you it now. You can't, even say, you can't even say class war in this country no. without somebody McCarthy finger pointing at you, calling you some kind of a commie. Communists no longer exist, okay, guys? So, Pinko, that no longer exists, so don't worry about it. But uh, there are things we need to fight about, and I think people are, it's just kind of slow, but they are waking up. And uh, the moment they become really aware that there is a divide and conquer effort, that that's how they can overcome it. If they become aware of it, they can overcome it. So, Let's po keep pointing it out. To see the plantation is to leave it. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, and get this. Pfizer were running hum human trial for palbociclib, which is, has the brand name of Ebrans. Uh, it's already... FDA approved for late stage. Uh, it's already FDA approved, but they were doing uh, late stage trial, and that study was halted. Why? Because the drug is made its goal. Because the drug is made its goal to delay the progression of the disease. The phase three study called Paloma Three. Wow. Dove? Was a, yeah, that's what they called it. Paloma Blanca. Okay. No, they didn't yeah. put Blanca, but they put number three because they had Paloma One and Paloma Two. Oh, okay. Actually, Paloma Two is still going on, by the way. The Bird of Peace. Yeah. Was altered after an independent data monitoring board, independent, oh yeah, not paid by Pfizer, mm -hmm. determined that publicly has proven its effectiveness in patients with advanced breast cancer. That's probably why they call it Paloma. And had to be an advanced breast cancer, but had to be previously treated with anti-estrogen drugs. Now, FDA granted the FDA, yeah, uh, granted the accelerated approval to Pablo Cicli 
and it was based on results studying that the drug delayed progression of the disease longer than the Novartis Fermata, which is an aromatase inhibitor. Pfizer is still conducting, though, the large phase two, uh, the large trial, which is phase two, Paloma two. And they're hoping that the benefit of Abrams as, of, as first line, not after doing other treatment, but first line treatment, but in combination with Femara, so not alone, and in combination with Femara. That will work better. That um, Femara is an aromatase inhibitor, and um, Abrams works by blocking two enzymes involved in cell growth. Okay, but two enzymes involved in cell growth, and are they specific of cancer or general cell growth? They're not saying it, but I, I read it before. It's any cell growth. The only competition that Pfizer might have is from Eli Lilly and company working on a drug capable of blocking the same kind of enzyme. So they're giving that, that information. Who is the competitor? So it's all based on putting money in this company, give them extremely positive and uh, way too optimistic information on those drugs based on the fact that uh, FDA has allowed accelerated mm. approval. See, that's the danger in accelerated approval because you don't know what the wrong range consequences are. Kind of like that it, accelerated Patriot Act. <laughs> I don't know. Is Faster. it accelerated the Patriot Act? Was it accelerated? Oh, that's, that's, that's way, way old news, but I mean, that's kind of the way the Patriot Act came about. First, there was 9 11, and then they had to accelerate this Patriot Act because we, it was absolutely necessary for the security of the nation. Yeah. So we wouldn't have any more part of the Pentagon being attacked and, and losing. And that famous quote, you know, oh, we have to hurry up and pass it so we can find out what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the legislation that said free speech about science was never even looked on and it was never passed. Free speech about science, which it should be mute, obviously. Self-explanatory lemma. We have to have a legislation and see if it could be approved. But obviously we're not even considering it because FDA is not going to like it. Okay, but, but we do accelerated approval. FDA does accelerated approval. Why? Oh, because there is a terrible need of this drug on the market. Okay, and what about the long-term effect? Well... We'll use the uh, IBM approach. Okay? <laughs> the IBM approach. Yeah, put on the market an untested product and then see the complaints we get <laughs> about it. And then as we get the complaints coming in, we'll work on it, trying to solve it. Hire beta testers. Yeah, but we are going to shorten the testing. That was something... I was involved in, and it was uh, some uh, really malfunctioning devices built in, Ch in uh, Japan, by the way. And um, I reported what the problem was uh, to higher management, and of course, uh, one of the executives that came from Germany on sabbatical, and uh, from IBM Germany to IBM headquarters uh, in my plane. He listened to me, and he was trying to get to the bottom of this and fix the problem. Of course, he had opposition from all directions. 
But while he was uh, while playing, uh, I was having difficult times, but was basically untouchable, uh, whether I knew that or not. <laughs> Uh, but then he went back to Germany. The moment he went back to Germany, I was fired. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a bit, uh, the IBM method. Don't test it. Don't do it. I was trying to stop the progress of that device that ended up costing a fortune to IBM because of being a terrible mistake. But... They didn't uh, pay attention to me. They pushed me to the side, and then they fired me, and then they ended up wasting a fortune on that one. And that's how IBM ended up stopping working on hardware and and just limiting on software. Um, and the software work was the headquartered in Houston. So I don't know what they're doing in Kingston anymore and in uh, Fishkill and Poughkeepsie. I don't they used to have manufacturing. I don't know what I have now. Anyway, so FDA is doing the fast track approval to cover up what the bad side effect might be, allowing the company to sell the device, uh, the, the, the drug. The, they do that with devices too, but um, allow the company to sell the drug. And then if a major problem come around, it will follow the Avastin case. Uh, let the path... Expire after killing hundreds of thousands of people, and then recall it. And no, then when the plenty doctor of time, plenty refused, of time to come up with excuses too. Yeah, and then when the doctor refused not to use it, then what they do? They allow without arresting them. As being the approval has been recalled, but they allow doctors to use it, and then they turn around and what do they do? Approve it for ovarian cancer. Why? Oh, because it's good for people. Yeah, and why? I mean, Avastin was recalled, uh, was used for breast cancer, and there were all these complaints about causing death by intestinal perforation, which is no connection with breast cancer, had to be attributed to the drug. Well, if they approved it for ovarian cancer, then people get intestinal perforation, they can easily be blamed on the cancer, so they're off the hook. People die because they lost a battle against cancer. Not they were killed by uh, Avastin. No, of course not. So, they're okay. People are okay using it, and the company keeps making money. And I think that the manufacturer Avastin is one of the company making giving out the most uh, amount of kickback in other companies. just don't believe it. Maybe some new ones are surpassing Avastin, but uh, Avastin has been paying for years. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you know, we're, we're at about, um, I think all together now, we're at about two and a half hours. We're getting close to it. Okay, so I guess that we had better... Uh, well, you know... Yeah people's attention spans <laughs> yes oh. <laughs> I don't know. well there are other drugs that uh, the FDA is giving the fast track but also I'm getting really tired so the FDA is giving the, the fast track and they really shouldn't so but we can talk about it next week I have plenty of time just remember one thing we are subject to a plot a plot to keep us sick and spending all the money we have on something that is really a serious danger. Keep in mind that the example of uh, Susan Summers, that was enough, smart enough to fight back. Keep that in mind. So, we need to get to a point where we can uh, put an end to these abuses to our life and uh, well being. Have a good week. We'll talk next week. Thank you for listening to The Medical Conspiracy with Dr. Carpenter.